This video is about what to do after you get cheated on. There are four things to do after you've discovered your partner, husband, wife, whatever, has cheated on you. To find out more, please stay tuned to this video. Welcome to the SCG Show, the home of education entertainment. And please do me a favor, if you really enjoyed this video, smash that like button. I would really appreciate it. I got the inspiration for this video when I found out a friend of mine had been cheated on. She came home from work to find her fiancé and partner of over a decade in bed with another woman who happened to be a friend of hers. So her fiancé was regularly cheating on her with one of her closest friends. Last year, a guy friend of mine, just before the pandemic, happened to catch his girlfriend of ages cheating on him as well. Another guy I know was also recently cheated on by his girlfriend who seemed to forget she was cheating with him initially, meaning that to get with him, she cheated on her then boyfriend, left him, and so on. As I've covered previously, it is one of the worst case scenarios when entering a romantic relationship, getting betrayed, cheated on. But once a cheater, always a cheater. Absolutely no one wants this to happen, but in a day of narcissism and entitlement on the rise, dating apps, is it a surprise? How many people are genuine and honest these days? How often do people talk through their problems head on? How often does someone put their hand up and say, I take responsibility, I'm sorry? Not many. My late dad taught me a lesson about always having boundaries in relationships. As an empathetic person myself, this can be challenging. And if I'm not careful, I could be swept under the ruse of a toxic, manipulative person. But cheating, in my opinion, well, that's a red flag. Most people might say, oh, look for the signs that they're cheating. Try and prevent them from cheating. But it's actually quite rare to see what do you do after they've been, you know, you've, you've found that they've cheated on you. But they displayed no red flags. I got blindsided. I never saw this coming, is what you might say. Did anyone see the pandemic coming? Did I see my dad, 62 years of age, healthy guy, die tragically? Did you see Donald Trump becoming president? Did you see Bitcoin taking off? I could go on. Life's unpredictable. That's what makes it interesting. Here is what to do after you get cheated on. So you've caught your romantic partner out. The lies been exposed, the masks have slipped. They've cheated on you. It is time to do the only logical, rational, difficult, but healthy thing, especially for your mental health. Leave the relationship. You're most likely going to be met with the following excuses. I love you. Don't end on this mistake. I never intended for this to happen. Please don't go. We'll make it work. I swear it's never going to happen again. Please, I was stressed. I needed my release. I love you more than ever now. Everything I've just said and variants of it is utter BS. Don't buy into it. Once a cheater, always a cheater. One of the most popular videos at the point of recording is about walking away. No surprise as probably many are walking away from toxic, abusive, negative situations and people. That's what you got to do. Pack your bags. Get the hell out of there. But is this not acting on my emotion, you might say? Don't I need to collect my thoughts? What part of your relationship is over don't you understand? Unless you have no self-respect and you want to trust someone who has no respect or love for you, be my guest. There's a woman I know who stayed in a loveless marriage with a man who regularly cheats on her. She's miserable, broken and depressed. I should have left him, she says, but I wasn't strong enough. Go to a hotel, a friend's house, Rent an Airbnb. You're in desperate need of space and time to heal, which I'll come on to next. You can't have that with your toxic partner hoovering around you. Sure, if you have kids, etc., the divorce needs to be planned, seek legal advice, etc. All that can happen down the line, and it will if you're married. But the bottom line is, the relationship is well and truly done, and you must walk away immediately 
Please don't forget to hit the like button if you are enjoying this video. When my dad died, I was robbed of my grief by selfish, entitled people and toxic family members who hogged attention. People came up to me, the son of my dad, weeks after I lost him, saying, how am I going to live without your dad? I was too busy babysitting grown adults and narcissists who were awful. And as my father's one-year anniversary came up, I looked back at the stress, drama, anxiety these idiots caused. My father wasn't really grieved, which hit me much later. When it did, it was so hard. You don't want delayed grief. Trust me. The same goes for the discovery of you being cheated on. You cannot grieve your hurt and pain when you're still with your partner, or worse, still engaging with them. That's why you need to switch off, close yourself away. You can go to a good friend, a family member, a counsellor, a pastor, whoever. Either way, it must be done. That woman who found her fiancé in bed with her friend followed my advice. Packed her bags, went back to live with her parents. Sobbed her eyes out for weeks. Miserable, saw no light at the end of the tunnel. Her dad said, I've never seen my daughter this upset. It breaks my heart. How is she going to get through this? But I insisted to her, many others did. Time's a great healer. It took a few months, but the crying stopped. Her smile and laughter returned, and it was radiant. Her confidence and strength was restored. Through the darkness, the pain and suffering, she came out the other side. When you stare long enough into the abyss, eventually the abyss stares back. Grief's a part of life, a season somewhat. Sometimes it's deserved, and life can be cruel to us. But must be adamant is to grin and bear it for a better tomorrow. Maybe you didn't deserve to be cheated on, nobody did. But grieve about it. Let it all out. Now, assuming in order you've walked away from the cheater, you've cried until there's no more tears left, comes a good part. It's quite fun. Healing. Like any breakup, healing only comes to those who don't dwell. When I left a toxic relationship a while ago, I was still in pain and sorrow, despite it being a tough and worthwhile decision. But leaving because of a betrayal like cheating holds a very heavy toll on your heart. That's why healing is essential, so you can build yourself up. Don't rush back into dating. That's the next step. After leaving the relationship, you must draw a close to that chapter and person. It's over. You've grieved for however long you needed to. You've cut contact. It stayed that way. All photos, reminders, pictures must be deleted, thrown away. No phone calls, emails, drive by to see them. Unless you're getting divorced, and again, speak to your attorney. Keep contact to a minimum or no contact. There was a guy I know who did the opposite of this. He discovered his girlfriend cheated on him. He left in a huff and stayed at his friend's house. Cried his eyes out, grieved the cheating for a while. Only then to forgive her, take her back and do it all over again. Is it any surprise that she cheated on him again and he was back in the same situation? Take this opportunity for some essential healing for your life. Rediscover those things that bring you joy. Design a workout plan. Get fit and healthy. Jump on a plane whenever we can. Travel. Start painting. Get into a hobby. Go shopping. Have a spa weekend. Buy a new pair of sneakers. All these fine activities are going to bring you so much joy. Something you were robbed of harshly. Treat yourself to a bit of excitement as it's going to help that healing and enjoyment. If anyone deserves it, it's certainly you. Do the healing. Finally, this is very important. Don't be a dweller, a Debbie Downer, a Mr. Negative. What happened to you was wrong. Totally undeserved, maybe. But you've got to move on. It's so essential that you do. Never bring your baggage to the table. You don't want to be that sort of person. And certainly don't bring it to your next potential romantic partner who may be the best person you've ever met in your life. Some friends give really crap advice. They'll say things like, 
Get out of there ASAP. Sleep around. Go on the dating apps. Yo, you know, YOLO, etc. Just do what suits you. You will know when you're ready to date again. Not when someone tells you. When you start planning your life without your ex in your plans, you don't think about them. That's when you're ready to move on. And when they no longer live rent-free in your head, aka you're doing the dishes, you're at work, you're at the gym, you're on another date, and you're not comparing, you're not thinking about it, that's when you have victory. Don't assume also all people are cheaters, or let it scare you either when you're in a new relationship. I've never cheated on someone, ever. I'm as loyal as they get. There are plenty, plenty others like you watching this video. Everyone's different. You're going to find happiness again. Trust me on this. And remember that those better days, they're coming. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, here's some more content you might be interested in.